Welcome back to CBS This Morning. High school football returned last night in Fairhope, Alabama. That's near Mobile. As you can see on the screen, many fans, they are not wearing masks, and that's in violation of school rules. The principal says he wanted people to cover up, but, quote, we can't make anybody do something. It's just one example of the problems that schools and colleges all over this country are facing as the coronavirus cases continue to go up. Now, some teachers' unions say they will not be forced to work in those conditions that they say and that they feel are unsafe. Our national correspondent, David Begnow, is in Miami with more on this story. David, the question there is, how far are the unions willing to go now? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Look, here in Florida, they're suing. In fact, today they're going to deliver their closing argument. They're fighting the mandate that the school system is saying you have to have in-person classes. Other teachers unions are saying, listen, if we're not going to fight you in court, we're going to fight you in the court of public opinion, and we're going to threaten to strike. New York City teachers protested in Brooklyn Thursday, demanding that the city implement what they say are essential safety measures. In the Midwest, teachers in Detroit say they're prepared to strike if the city does not provide adequate testing before classrooms reopen. And out west, one Arizona school district delayed in-person learning after teachers there staged a sick out. Some experts are urging local officials to just err on the side of caution. It can't be schools as usual this fall. We can only go back when community spread is under control and when aggressive risk reduction strategies are in place within the four walls of the school. You know, risk reduction appears to be a problem at colleges across the country. Schools in at least 17 states have reported positive cases on campus. <laughs> Parties like this at North Carolina State University force that school to put all classes online. At Purdue University in Indiana, 36 students were suspended for holding a party in violation of the university's health rules. At Penn State University, a party outside a freshman dormitory was broken up by campus police. And at Syracuse, hundreds of freshman students, many without masks, were seen gathered together on the quad. Now the university says it may have to shut down campus before classes even start. It's infuriating to see uh, you know, people my age thinking that they're just kind of invincible. Patrick Pinfield is a senior at Syracuse. He's also a coronavirus survivor. He caught the virus during a semester abroad and says he dealt with lingering symptoms for four months. He's urging other students to remember what's at stake here. Everyone wants the college experience. Everyone wants to party. It's, it's Syracuse University. And I want to have a college experience, too. I want to have a graduation. I want to be able to go to class. Um, and so it's just not going to happen if people don't follow the guidelines. There's going to be consequences and there's going to be a lot of angry people. You know, Dr. Deborah Burks, who's a part of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, is now advising colleges to invest in surge testing. What does that mean? She's recommending that colleges do five to 10,000 tests every day. That's a lot. But it gives you an idea of the type of scale that's needed to handle things and try and get back to some type of normalcy. Tony? Yeah. It's amazing that we're talking about scaling testing all these months after the outbreak, but here we are. David Begnaud for us. David, thank you very much.